I'm going to walk you through, you know, how to use your three shape software, hardware, some design service uh, help to make your lab more efficient digitally. Um, so my name is Carl Horrocks. I'm the business development manager at 3Shape. Um, I've been with 3Shape for a little over 11 years now um, in this specific role for five. Um, so, so if there's any questions along the way, anything about 3Shape in general, maybe it's off topic. Uh, like we said earlier, you know, please uh, put it in the chat field. And um, as we, we get through the presentation, I'll, I'll try to answer them, but definitely have some time at the end to answer all your questions. So to just go through our agenda today, uh, there are many ways a lab can, you know, efficiently use three shape. And um, you know, there's there's a couple different categories to like a, take a look at um, to how you can become more efficient uh, with your setup. Uh, first is hardware capabilities, and hardware is broken down into a couple different segments. Each one of these agenda topics are going to be broken down into a couple segments, but Regarding the hardware capabilities, we're looking at um, your scanner itself and the speed and the accuracy of, of what your kit scanner can do because that's time, right? It takes time to scan um, and, and utilizing the latest technology definitely um, uh, decreases the time spent in front of the scanner and allows you to do other uh, tasks throughout the lab. So the scanner is one. We're gonna take a look at some scanning specs. Uh, next is PCs. Um, uh, the PC development, the speed, the graphics card, the, the RAM that has been developed in these PCs over the last few years has greatly increased. Um, and if there's one little category I see a lot of times labs uh, underutilizing is uh, updating their PCs. So we're going to have a look at some of the latest PCs. Um, next is software efficiencies. And obviously it's the, the title of our webinar today, but uh, there's a couple of categories within software efficiencies. Uh, one would be, you know, the software itself. And every year, 3Shape, we come out with new software features. And we're going to talk a little bit about the new features and how they improve the designing process. Uh, but we're also going to take a look at how your setup of the software is installed. You know, are you installed as a server client setup? Are you installed as a server setup? Or, excuse me, a, a standalone setup? And what are some of the benefits between those two configurations? Um, we'll talk a little bit about license configurations as well. Um, next is, you know, another category of efficiency, of efficiency is design help. Um, you know, in, in case you need to outsource designs to a, a third party, uh, there are plenty of, uh, of design services out there. And uh, we'll take a look at one of them. And, uh, and then next is some extra assistance where we'll spend some time talking about um, the training uh, YouTube channel that 3Shape has to offer, some Facebook groups that help, and just being a part of these, uh, you know, Facebook groups or, you know, going to our YouTube channel can help you, you know, make your lab a little bit more efficient within 3Shape as well, whether it's hearing it directly from 3Shape via YouTube video or peer-to-peer -peer on our, our Facebook page. Um, again, all that kind of stuff will help uh, you in the lab grow with digital. So first is the hardware. And um, in the last year and a half, we've been uh, running with our generation red e-scanners. And uh, Henry Shines Zahn rebrands three shape lab scanners under the Nova label. So, same three shape scanner, just when Zahn sells you a scanner, it's under the Nova label. And these scanners have gotten a lot faster um, since we introduced the e scanners back in 2017. So, this generation red, right off the bat, gets you 20% 20, 20 faster in scan speed compared to the first generation of e scanners. And we're going to compare this uh, against the, the older D scanner model as well. So this is our portfolio of the latest uh, scanning technology. And again, right off the bat, uh, you know, looking at an, uh, a new generation red e-scanner, you're saving 20% uh, scan time versus the older generation of e-scanners and then even, even faster against the older d-scanners as well. And then just taking a look at the specs, 
you can see the, the whole portfolio of Novux uh, red e scanners, you know, pr pretty much, you know, our entry level scanner, the E1 is around 30 seconds of scan time uh, per arch. So, you know, even, even the E1 is, is a great improvement in speed compared to the older models as well. And then all the way up to the latest and greatest E4 scanner at nine seconds of scan speed. So, you know, all four models are very fast and obviously the fastest and, and kind of market leader in, in scanning is the E4. And on top of that, you know, we have other, um, you know, great features, you know, with fast impression scanning, um, very accurate uh, scans all the way to four microns with the E4 and then some other features regarding color scanning and the scan strategy as well. So let's take a look at, you know, again, the webinars and efficiency. Let's take a look at, you know, what the older D scanners uh, specs used to be. And within three shape, we've probably had three generations of, of scanners. So let's look at the early generation of scanners. And this was from 2010 and 2014. Um, we had these D scanners in our portfolio, the D700, the D800, probably, you know, pushing the technology 10 plus years ago. These were, we are great scanners for the time. Um, they use a little bit different technology. They use the red laser technology, which was, you know, what we had back then. And um, it was a gold standard of accuracy. I mean, 20 microns for the D scanner, you know, 10, 12 years ago was, you know, a very accurate uh, model scanner. Then we introduced the D800 scanners, which got you down to 15 microns accuracy. Um, again, uh, very accurate for its time. And even still today, very accurate. Um, but you see the scan times, and this is per model, 75 seconds. So over a minute, uh, you know, for every case you're putting in, you know, each model is over a minute of scan time. Um, so that adds up over the course of a full work day when you're scanning in lots of cases. And we'll, we'll do some comparisons uh, in the next couple slides. Uh, but then you can see, you know, back 10, 12 years ago, our entry level scanner, the D500, and that was almost two minutes of scan time per arch. Um, so again, if, if you're utilizing one of these scanners, they're, they're still great scanners. And by all means, there, there are plenty of them out there uh, still working today. But if you're looking at efficiency, this is, this is you know, step number one, um, looking at your time scanning in front of these systems and then, you know, what you would be saving if you were to upgrade to it for the red generation, red e-scanner. So that was that four or five years in the early uh, 2010, 2014. Then I'm gonna say that the next generation of three shape uh, lab scanners was 2015 to 2017. And why this is a, the next generation of lab scanners because we have a new scan technology within these uh, units. And we switched from a red laser technology to a blue LED uh, light source. And, you know, one thing that the blue LED does is uh, accuracy. You know, we, we've jumped from the 20 microns of accuracy that the D700 had or the 15 microns of accuracy that the D800 had. And that gets us down to 10 microns or seven microns with the 850 and the D900, or even all the way down to five microns with the D1000 and the D2000. Uh, these all are great scanners. Um, there are still plenty of on the market, but scan times, you know, they're now just breaking the one minute per arch barrier, right? We got 55 seconds of scan time. Um, the D900L was, was a great um, into getting it close to that 30 second mark. Uh, but then the D1000 and the D2000 um, just got that under that 30 second uh, scan time. So with this second generation, we're really cutting down scan times and, you know, increasing our, our accuracy as well. And then the next round are the e-scanners, um, which we saw previously uh, in, in the slides before showing all four e-scanners. So those are kind of the, the three generations of, of three-shape lab scanners, the early D700s and D800s, and then now the 
D750s, D850s, D1000, D2000. Um, still closed scanner, um, being that the door's closed, you can't fit a full articulator model. And then in 2017, current till currently, we have our e-scanners, which are the open uh, lab scanner, very efficient in scan times, as we saw, and accuracies, and then very flexible when it comes to uh, full articulator scanning as well. So next, let's compare maybe one of the older generation lab scanners to the new uh, Novux E4 scanner. And this is a comparison we, we did with the D700 uh, with 20 cases. So 20 cases per day is, is a pretty good caseload at a, at a typical lab. And knowing that the D700 scans a model at 75 seconds, an arch and the E4 at nine seconds, right off the bat, if you're doing 20 cases a day, uh, you're roughly going to save an hour of scan time. I mean, who doesn't want an hour back in time, whether it's, you know, to cut out early, an hour early for the day, or it's use that hour to do other things in the lab. Um, uh, typically, you know, the, the person in the lab doing the scanning might be in an entry level position, you know, new to the lab, learning the trade. Um, so if they're saving an hour a day, this is where you can teach some other skills in the lab and, and repurpose them and, you know, build up their, their knowledge of, of uh, dental technology. Um, so right there, boom, just upgrading a 700 to an E4, you're going to save an hour. I mean, right off the bat, I mean, like I said, this webinar is about efficiency. That's pretty efficient. Um, next is the accuracies, right? So 20 microns versus four. So very accurate. That feels good. You're getting a, uh, you know, an almost point to point uh, perfect scan, you know, four microns is, is very minimal. And then some other things that aren't factored in to this overall one hour of scan time savings. But, you know, let, let's say uh, you have a, a, a model, you know, maybe it's a full arch uh, restoration that needs to be done, and it's been articulated on a physical articulator. Well, if you were to scan that in with one of the D scanners, you can't do that with a full articulator. So you'd have to unmount it, um, you know, scan it in and then remount it. And, and those times aren't considered in this, in this study here. But with the e, any of the e-scanners, you can stick a, a full articulated model into that scanner and, you know, off you go with your bite scan. So right there, probably the, the biggest way to save efficiency is upgrading out of a D-scanner to an, well, any of the e-scanners. And you're going to save a lot of time sitting in front of your scanner. Uh, scanning cases. So taking a look at some of the others, other opportunities. So we just we just covered the 60 minutes saving time where we, we compared 20 cases of a 700 versus an E4. Um, we talked a little bit about accuracy, um, down to four microns of accuracy with the E4 as well. And then being that the E4 has four cameras, uh, you can actually leave the dies in your model and scan. So you're saving one extra step in the scan process. So uh, you don't have to do that extra single die scan. Or you can utilize our impression scanning workflow where you can scan the impression and then it allows you to pour up a single die and scan that single stone die in and the software will merge uh, those files together and, and give you a, a good model to work off of. We talked a little bit about the uh, articulator scanning, but here's an example of scanning a full articulated model into the e-scanner. Again, saving time compared to the, the older d-scanner models um, where you might have to unmount that. And then color. Uh, color is a, a great feature in our scanners. If Specifically, if you're doing um, RPD designs, you can draw on your model, you can draw on the margin, um, you, can, you can do a lot of different things when it comes to the texture scanning capabilities of the e-scanners as well. So let's go back and just take a little bit of a look at um, the technology in, in comparing those older generation scanners to the, uh, the second and then the third generation of scanners. So originally, the D700 and 800 were red laser technology. And again, that was what was available 10, 12 years ago. Then that 
second generation of jump when we had come into the D750s, the D850s, the D900s. That's where we switched to the, the blue LED. Um, and the blue LED gets you a little bit more accuracy and a little bit more speed when it comes to scanning. But being that these scanners had a bigger interior chamber, um, it now allows for some multi-die capabilities. So all these scanners come with a seven, uh, seven dies that you can scan in, in uh, individually in, in one order. Um, so again, saving some time in the scan process. So then now it's compared to the next round of, of lab scanners. This was introduced with the D1000, the D2000, and it's what we incorporated with all the e-scanners and it's what we use today. And this was the big jump in technology uh, regarding scan times. It was the multi-line blue LED um, scanning, scanning technology compared to the one red laser we use in the past or the one blue LED that we used for those D750s and D850s. So having 27 lines of light shine down on your model or impression is what really gets our scanners under that 30 seconds of scan time. Um, so just a little backstory of you know, how we got to the scan times that we're achieving today, mainly due to blue LED and the new uh, multi-line uh, LED features that are, that are in all of our scanners uh, currently. Now also contributing to the uh, multi-line blue LED are accuracies as well. And um, again, more efficient, right? Something that's more accurate, you're gonna get a, a more efficient design and a better fitting restoration. So I'd like to incorporate that into the presentation, but here you can see the D700, which is a 20 micron accuracy versus an E4 being four microns. Might be hard to see, but, but th these are point clouds. This is how a scanner captures your, your data from your models or impressions. It picks it all up into little uh, dots. And then the software connects triangles to make those dots to make your image a 3D um, model. Uh, and you can see here, this is the little uh, onlay case um, where you can see kind of around where that margin is on, on the E4, it's darker. That means the triangle, the triangulization is smaller, making more detail, making your 3D scan more accurate. And you can see here as well, kind of a, a before and after pick, kind of zoomed in a little bit closer on this image as uh, is uh, the, the triangulization on the D700 scan on your left versus your E4. You can see on the, the E4 on your right, uh, much darker around the margin and that's gonna be contributed to the, the more accurate of the, of the scan from the E4. So uh, next, just to, just to wrap up and just can compare, you know, those generations of scanners side by side each other, um, comparing to the Novux E4, uh, you know, you can see the scan times, 75 seconds, down to 55 seconds, down to 35 seconds, and then now, now nine seconds. Uh, you can see the accuracies, 20 microns down to 15, down to seven, down to four, right? So right off the bat, um, you know, taking a look at what you, your scanner has uh, capabilities of and, and taking a look at the, at the generation red e-scanners, um, you can see a huge savings in time. And you might not go with the E4, you know, you might look at the E3, which is 18 seconds of, of scan time. Again, that's, that's greatly, uh, reducing the time spent in front of the scanner on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's one segment of the hardware. Uh, the next segment of hardware to think about when making your lab more efficient is PCs. Okay, so three shape, we, we pair our lab scanners with uh, Lenovo uh, ThinkStations. Um, we've been shipping out with Lenovo for the last um, uh, year and a half. And we're, we're getting great feedback uh, from the market with these new uh, Lenovo towers. And uh, you know, some of the reasons for that are solid state hard drives, uh, professional grade NVIDIA uh, graphics card, that definitely helps. And then the Intel i7 uh, processors as well, um, definitely 
uh, helps with scanning time and post-processing mainly, and then post-processing when you're designing as well uh, as greatly uh, uh, sped up also. So one of, the, one, of the, one of the troubles within the lab or what I've seen with uh, speaking to customers, you know, who might have gotten digital a few years ago. Um, and then, you know, digital has allowed a lot of laboratories to grow throughout the years is maintaining um, uh, your, your infrastructure, right? So you might have bought a scanner seven, eight years ago, maybe even four or five years ago. And that's great. And, uh, you know, you got your lab digital and you're receiving um, intraoral scans and you're, and you're just scanning yourself with the lab scan and you're designing all these cases, but you haven't kept up with your infrastructure, meaning your networks, your PCs, um, how they uh, communicate between one another. And it's kind of been an oversight with a lot of labs because labs, we're not IT guys, right? We're, uh, we, we're, we're making restorations, right? Uh, but this is definitely a, you know, a point where I see that that's not attended to uh, frequently enough um, and then, you know, kept up with as well. So definitely take a look at what your PCs are um, and thinking about, you know, what you can do to upgrade a PC, um, you know, just, just within, um, you know, upgrading your PC, you're going to see the software move throughout the workflow quicker uh, and it's the post-processing that gets done um, quicker and more efficient as well. So definitely consider uh, what you guys are working with on, on the PC level and how that's integrated in your lab. All right, so that wraps up uh, the first segment of today's webinar on hardware. Uh, let's take a look at the next uh, round of, of efficiencies to take a look at and that's software. Um, so first, 3Shape, uh, we have a few different software packages to choose from. Um, we have a, a crown and bridge package. We have a dental systems premium package. We have a removable package for our removable technicians. And we have a complete restore package, which includes all dental systems modules. Um, so, you know, one thing to consider is knowing what you guys have. There's a lot of labs I talk to, they don't even know what they what what's on their license, right? They they know they can design crown and bridges, and they know they can design implants. But then they're like, one time I able was able to design a denture, but I can't do that anymore. Um, so it's always good to see what you guys have, um, you know, because you know, people request trials every once in a while to see new things and expand your business. But you know, maybe you don't act on a purchase. But 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 knowing what you guys have is, is definitely important, and. Um, I get questioned all the time, like, if I send you my download number, can I, can you tell me what, what's, what, what's on it? Um, so knowing what you have is definitely um, a good a starting point for some efficiency on the software. But one round of efficiencies to take a look at are the year-to-year -year software updates that 3Shape comes out with. Um, so our, our dental systems, uh, 2022, will be out later this year. Um, typically it's out in June um, due to what's happening in Europe. Um, we have a large force of our development team is in Kiev, Ukraine. Um, everyone's safe, um, but you know, they have been relocating to different uh, three shape offices. Um, so the dental systems 2022 might be delayed a little bit, maybe more uh, mid to end summer. So. Uh, just to kind of keep your ears out, but it is being worked on and the, and the beta version is out with our testers. Uh, so it's great. Uh, but I just want to go through some of the highlights to, you know, what's to come and, and, and get you guys thinking of even more efficiencies. And there's a lot of, of new features to come that are going to help streamline some of the communication channels you have with doctors and, uh, and some of the new tools and workflows will help within these individual uh, modules and, and, and workflows when you guys are designing. So the, the first one I'd like to highlight um, is our uh, new web 3D preview. And again, these next couple of slides are what's gonna come in the, the next release, like I said, in, that'll come out later this summer. 
Um, but number one, you know, we know that doctors and labs communicate on a daily basis, if not on an hourly basis about cases, right? And it sometimes is really hard, you know, to get in touch with the doctor. You know, you can't read their script. Um, you know, you, 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 you pick up the phone and call, but you know, they're in, they're in a, a procedure and you play a lot of phone tag. And you just want them to approve a design before it goes to uh, your milling machine or, or your 3D printer. So now, uh, specifically geared to doctors who are still analog and they might not have an iOS scanner, we can now share a web link with them. That web link is a 3D viewer. Uh, that 3D viewer will provide the scans and it'll provide the design of the case that you're looking uh, for the doctor to approve. So right off the bat, boom, sending them a link to view. Um, and that's what you see here on the little video on the left. And the video on the right is what the doctor would see with, uh, with the 3D preview link that you'll be able to send to them. So trying to streamline some communication is, is definitely a, a huge uh, benefit with some of these next software updates. <clears throat> next, some improvements within the software. Um, and this is one example. There are a, a few other examples of how we are providing you, the user, flexibility when designing in the software. And uh, this, these two little videos specifically are the bar design, um, but it also has some uh, flexibility similar when doing attachment designs as well. So what you have here on the left-hand side is a bar design. Uh, we give you some generic bar profiles. If you wanted to make any custom bar profiles, you'd have to close out the design, open up the control panel. And here, what you see on the, on the right is a custom bar editor that's in the dental system control panel. So you would then customize your bar design, save and close it, open the case back up, and then start designing. And if something wasn't right, you'd have to close back down and do that all over again. Well, now we're, we're giving you a lot of these editing tools that you, that'd be common in the control panel right at your fingertips in the design software. So less back and forth in the control panel to fix something or, or make an edit and then reopen that case. So adding these um, editing tools directly in the software is going to make, for instance, bar design more efficient. Um, next, when it comes to, oops, maybe that was not a video. When it comes to some abutment uh, designs uh, or implant workflows, even with screw tank crowns, uh, we have some new viewing uh, features that allow for additional offsets. Specifically, the video you see here on the left with a, uh, with a screw, visible screw hole algorithm. Um, so we have the ability to angle screw holes within the software, but sometimes they hang up on, uh, on the lip of the, of the screw head and it won't allow it to be seated down. So now we have the ability to um, trim up some of that uh, screw hole or, or we're kind of, you'll see, see in this little video how um, this, when it runs again, when this screw comes in, it's going to hang up a little bit and using an angular point offset, it will, uh, it'll trim some of that out a little bit. So um, again, making, making this, the screws down the channel more efficiently. And then we have some workflows when it comes to um, implant bridges that have individual crowns submitted on top. Um, just a new library to choose from that'll make your designing uh, quicker and easier to adjust as well. All right, so that's some highlights to, of the software of what's to come and you know the highlights I feel that will be most efficient in this crown and bridge and implant workflow. Next, um, receiving intraoral scans. Um, obviously, 3Shape, we have our, our TRIOS intraoral scanner and included with 3Shape software is, a, is an inbox to receive that. Or if you're using a third-party design software, we, we do sell a product called a Trios Inbox Standalone, where you can receive Trios files um, and then export them as STLs. 
But what we recently announced is an integration with Dent Supply Serona is to receive their scans directly into your dental manager, much like how you receive Trios files as well. So what this allows for more efficiency, uh, you're not monitoring another portal or another database. You're not downloading cases. You're not exporting them. You're not importing them. You're receiving these Serona scans directly into uh, an inbox that's in your dental manager. So again, receiving third-party scans, specifically these Serona files, uh, definitely more efficient. Now, this is an add-on module. Um, so if you're, if you're looking to uh, receive these Serona files directly into your, your dental system software, reach out to your Zon rep, uh, and they'll be able to give you a quote uh, regarding this third-party inbox module. All right, so now moving into another segment of Three Shape Software is our removable modules. Uh, there's been a big push uh, in the last few years, few months, few weeks on digital dentures. And when I, when I say few years, few months, few weeks, because um, there's a lot of innovation happening in the digital realm of design. Um, and we'll go through that and then we'll go through some of the software enhancements as well. But just want to give you an overview of, of how or you know, what the global uh, market is doing when it comes to digital removables. So about 50 million dentures are produced every year, analog, um, and only 2% are done digitally. But that was a big growth uh, where just a few years ago, it was, it was pretty much zero. Um, and we all know why, you know, digital, we don't, we don't have to go through all that, but just want to give some highlights on some cases uh, and the amount of cases that are being uh, designed in three shape uh, with removables. So over 3 million removable cases were done last year. And our removables, we consider, we got RPDs, we have custom trays, and we have full dentures. And digitizing these indications are definitely going to make your lab more efficient. Um, and you can see, you know, from the previous years, um, there has been a 123% increase in RPD cases, 72% in uh, custom tray cases, and over 104% uh, increases in enter cases. You might say, why is that? You know, why are people designing more of these removables? You know, why are they uh, transitioning from analog which is time consuming uh, to digital, obviously more efficient. And, and a lot has to do with one, the software improvements that we've done over the years, um, but also the material side. Materials are more aesthetic, materials are stronger. Um, mill times, if you're gonna mill any of these uh, applications, the mill times have come way down, more efficient. Um, printers have gotten faster, more efficient, with more material flexibility. So. Kind of all that wrapped up is why we're seeing a big increase in these types of designs. And, you know, maybe if you're still doing some of these analog, you might want to take a look at how you can uh, digitize any one of these indications. And the, the easiest thing to do is uh, custom custom trays. Um, so it might be a, a great step in, in digitizing your removable department by, you know, designing and 3D printing custom trays. Um, but I just want to take a look at some of the highlights of our removable software uh, that will come in, in the dental systems 2022. Uh, first are some denture on implant workflows, um, all done under, you know, one order form. Uh, we could always do these kind of workflows, but it might have taken a little outside the box creativity on you know, how to use the software. It might have needed multiple cases, you know, where you design it in one and you copy and append uh, your design and, you know, make a second case. But regardless of all that, we're really streamlining it, really trying to keep everything under one order um, and less of these workarounds when it comes to some of these complicated cases. Uh, we got a great uh, try-in workflow for copying uh, try-ins. We have some new tools to help uh, with setups be more efficient. And we've customized some wax templates where you, the user, 
you, you know you know what your customers like when it comes to gingiva design and you can now customize some of these wax templates so let's take a look at some of these uh highlights uh one by one and the first one i'll let these videos roll while i talk through this is the setup um obviously you know there's there's different classes of occlusion and in the past to uh, you know do a a uh, class two or class three bite, you'd have to move each tooth individually one by one over uh, in the in the setup process. Well, now with the, when the next version of software comes and, and you guys upgrade to, you can lock a jaw and you can move the whole that whole arch uh, individually as well. And you can see that kind of on this um, on this little video to the left. Um, so locking one jaw at a time to help with uh, different different types of uh, setup schemes. Next, uh, the ability to remove, let me try to play the video again, uh, any tooth while designing. Again, you think, hey, why, why would that be more efficient? Well, well, last year we came out with a new workflow where you can incorporate a full denture and an RPD case all in one order. Um, and that was a big, big improvement on um, efficiencies from last year. And this year we're improving on that. So basically, if you were to set up your order as a, a full over partial, and you were looking at the order and you said, ah, maybe there needs to be a, an, an extra tooth on this partial. And then when you get into design, you realize, ah, it's, it's bicuspid, doesn't need to be there um, or, or, you know, whatever. Uh, in the past, you couldn't remove certain uh, anterior teeth from the design. You had to have to go back, open the order form up, remove that specific tooth in the order form, save and close, reopen your design, and then design the case uh, back at the Smile Composer. Well, now you're able to remove any tooth at any time uh, when it comes to uh, a removable design. So that was uh, that was you know a big improvement, kind of keeping you inside the design and less back and forth to adjust uh, order forms. Uh, next, we'll play the video on the left first. Is a, a really nice new preview, um, and this is definitely going to help efficient uh, your setup. So we have a new 3D preview. Uh, tab at the bottom window when designing RPDs or, or full dentures, where you can, you know, have your main design in the center, but you can set up these three viewing windows at the bottom at any angle you want. Um, so when you're moving teeth around, you know, you can, you can keep your, your case active in the center and you can see the changes from each one of the angle previews that you've set up on, on the lower window bars. Um, so less rotating around, less oscillating, less trying to line that model up to see down um, the buckle surface to see how those, the teeth are set up, where you can kind of do that at the bottom and then see your changes um, in real time. And then the next uh, change on the, on the right, um, oh, that's not a video. Um, it's setting up a, a new wax template. So when your gingiva design comes in, um, we, we give you the opportunity to set up some custom wax templates. Uh, you know, this, these are the, the gingiva um, character, characterizations uh, that the software will propose for you. And if you give the software some, some guidance and you save those templates, you know, where you would like um, some of that characterization to be present on the gingiva design, will come in more intense or, you know, um, or maybe more smoothed out, depending on how you like it, by just choosing a specific wax template that you can customize. So again, making the gingiva part of a denture and RPD uh, quicker because you are customizing these templates and then just choosing that as a fly, the software will propose that as close as possible to, you know, what you recommend. All right, and then kind of, kind of uh, the last highlight when it comes to um, the software efficiencies within this denture module, specifically when it comes to um, you know implant related denture cases with locators, um, might not be a 
time efficiency, but you know, might be a little bit more on the accurate side, which is going to get you a more accurate uh, end product where the efficiencies will lead, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, you don't need to reline it, you know, it's, it's being more accurate. And, and with this um, case, what you see here in the little video are some locators that were scanned in. Kind of like, think of this if you've done any implant work when you use a scan body. When you scan the scan body, or for instance, when you scan these locators, um, you know, it might not be as crisp of a scan, but then in the, in the software process, specifically when it comes to implant workflow, you're gonna align your scan of the scan body with the actual CAD file of the scan body. And then that CAD file scan body will replace the scan of the scan body and make it very accurate um, for the next step forward. We're doing the same thing with locators. As you can see here in the video, the scan of the locators aren't as crisp, but we give you the ability to replace it with, exist with, a, with an attachment of the locator. And you can see here in this position, um, you're getting much more accurate uh, locator. So when you design your denture on top of it, it'll trim and cut exactly to that locator attachment uh, file rather than the scan of the attachment. And again, that'll be more efficient down the road in this, in this process after you uh, mill it or 3D print it. You know, there's less likely need to do any sort of reline or, or uh, refit to that original locator. Uh, because you'll be using the exact STL file to design from. All right, so that basically wraps up a lot of the design uh, aspects of making your lab a little bit more efficient. But let's take a look at your setup, right? So within 3Shape, we have a variety of ways how you can set up 3Shape uh, throughout your lab. Um, and, and generally, there's, you know, two schools of thought. Uh, there's a standalone installation where you have one scanner, you have one computer, you have one design system, you know, one design software. So you would scan your cases. Once done, then you'd hit next, and then you would design your cases. And it would kind of be that workflow, scan and design. And that would be under a standalone setup. Standalone setups are fine. Um, they, you know, it's good for smaller databases. Um, but you know, when you start to, you know, add designers, when you start to add another scanner, right? It's hard to expand off of the standalone, but a standalone is a great, you know, way to get going in digital and, and get your lab started. Um, but most likely you're gonna want a server client setup. Um, and with a server client setup, it allows for a centrally located uh, database where all your files are stored, where all your material files are located, and it allows you to add on to um, your lab um, or your, you know, your three shape setup. So here's an example of a, of a server client. So on the left, you have your server. That's going to be where all your, your, uh, your scans are located. It's going to be where your uh, database is, your material files. It's going to be where your dongle is located. And when installing a server, basically it opens up all the folders that work within 3Shape. So it allows for other PCs to be networked in and share files from those folders. And you can see here, we have one server installed on the left with the dongle in the database, and we have three clients. So depending on what's on your license, you could technically have three people designing at the same time. You could technically have design or you know station number one be your scanner, and then station number two and station number three being designers as well. So what that'll allow is for someone to com continuously scanning cases all day, and then as those scans get finalized and post processed, you know those scans will be stored on the server. But then station number two and station number three will see those as okay, this case has been scanned. It's done, it's ready for design, and then they can start opening up and designing cases right out of, uh, right from the server because everything's all connected uh, to that server. So station number one, again, scanner located, scanning continuously all day. Uh, 
station number two and number three could be design stations where they could be pulling in scans and, and continuously designing all day. So that's definitely one way to become more efficient in the scanning design process as well. So that's definitely something to can, can think about. Now, if you get into a, a larger scenario and you have lots of cases, lots of scanners, lots of material files, your lab is a full service lab where you have, you have the crown and bridge, you have implants, you have removables. Uh, you know, you might think about uh, having multiple servers. I mean, this is, this is one way to set up a three-shaped lab. Um, and depending on where your dongle is, you can plug your dongle into server one, and within the dongle service, you can point other servers to utilize, you know, where that dongle license is located. So you don't technically don't need three dongles for, for this setup. You can have one dongle and have server two looking at server one, server three looking at server one for the license uh, setup. But then just like the last slide we went through the server client, that's just the same thing that can be done here. Um, you can have your crown and bridge and in this uh, database number one, where you can have you know station number one, your scanner and station number two and three, your designers. And then same with uh, database number two and database number three. It's, it's kind of all how you want it, but three shape, we, we, can, we can do these types of setups. Um, so it's definitely something to think about. Um, I've, I've known labs that have, you know, database number one is three scanners all side by side, scanning all day, boom, 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 boom. And then, you know, database number two and number three would be, you know, your, your, your fixed division, your removal division, and they're just pulling the scans, you know, continuously and designing. And, and the people working, you know, those design stations actually never scan anything. Uh, they're just strictly designers. So. Thinking about these couple setups um, definitely will help in the efficiency and the flow of the workflow uh, utilizing this server client setup. Um, next, I know we're, we're talking about you know the software installation, but you know obviously it's a it's a hardware that runs the software, and that hardware are PCs. And I know we we spent a little bit of time of update you know talking about updated PCs, but again this is definitely a, a big pre-installation check requirement uh, just to make sure that you're running the you know latest PCs in your lab. And uh, you know something to take a look at is RAM. Um, and obviously we say what a minimum is, but you know we always want to you know go to recommended if not higher. Um, the minimum would be good for you know a lab that's just designing crowns. You know, they're just a crown and bridge lab. We're just doing single crowns, some small bridges. And that's, you know, the RAM of 16 gigs can, can keep up with that. Now, if you're a little bit larger lab within the digital space, you're doing larger bridges, you're doing implant work, you're doing dentures. Um, that's pulling a lot of resources from the computer. And uh, you're going to want to think of using more RAM. 32 gigs is, is pretty pretty standard, recommended. Most PCs come with 32 gigs. We sell a, an ultra computer that has 64 gigs of RAM. Um, again, so thinking that way, you know, RAM 32, 64 is, is a great way to, to help speed up um, your software. Uh, next is uh, hard drives versus solid state hard drives. Um, and all of our PCs coming today are, are solid state hard drives. So um, if you're utilizing an, an older PC, you might want to think about um, upgrading a PC to get a solid state hard drive. Um, obviously, it's one of the what downfalls with the solid state hard drive is there's less disk, disk space. Um, you know, so you might have to think about cleaning up your database a little bit quicker. Then you know with a with a computer that has more disk space, but but definitely something uh, to consider as well. And again, uh, we come with i7 processors, um, and then we've moved to a um, professional grade uh, NVIDIA cards as well. So uh, definitely something to consider on the gra video graphics card. Um, you know, upgrading that to to be more efficient to the design workflow. Um, 
Next, when it comes to setting up your server client, um, when it comes to receiving intraoral scans, you're going to want to take a look at your network speeds. Um, you know how fast your your internet is. That's how quick you can download things. Okay, it's how quick you can upload files. Uh, definitely a little bit more efficient as there as well. Um, and then last but not least, just looking at some tips and tricks on PCs. Um, and, and a lot of times, again, you know, sometimes we're lab technicians. We're, we're, we're not looking at these things. It's not on the top of our mind, but removing old orders, you know, orders, you know, six months or older, get them off your system, clean them up, uh, trim your material files. If you're not using specific implant libraries, if you're not utilizing that milling center anymore, get rid of those material files. Um, because every time you open up your dental manager or you open up a case, the software is sifting through to make sure that that case has the material file that you actually have in your control panel. Um, you know, and if it's got to sift through to, to find that material through all those other materials that you aren't using, it's going to take some extra time. Um, so, so definitely consider cleaning that out. And in the control panel, uh, there are some options to automatically delete orders. Um, so you can go into your control panel under, under dental manager, under automatically delete orders. Um, you might want to click on both enable and uh, click, or excuse me, keep files, but don't delete from database. So these will keep your files in your folder, in your database, but it'll remove them from the dental manager. So if you ever needed to get them back in or maybe design off an older case, you'd have to re-import them, but that's not the end of the world because you know it's not cycling through and looking through those cases every time you open and close uh, your dental system. So definitely something to take a look at uh, and, and start cleaning up old orders and again, um, trimming up material files that you're not using as well. So um, streaming down those implant uh, DMEs that you're not using, the milling center that you don't use anymore, that lab that you outsourced that had, that had a specific uh, material file that you needed to design off of. If you're not using them anymore, get rid of those. Um, that'll definitely help with the speed of starting up your, your dental system as well. Um, so that's basically some software efficiencies when it comes to uh, setting up your software, designing and the designing, um, whether it's crown and bridge or implants or dentures. So, um, so hopefully that, you know, triggers some things that you can look at into your lab to help make yourself more efficient. Now, going through the last section of today's uh, presentation is design help. Uh, being more efficient with less uh, resources that you have in your lab, right? Like, so we know designers, employees are hard to find. Um, you know, it's hard to keep talent sometimes. It's hard to find talent. Um, and, you know, it might be the end of a, of a rush week and you might, you know, have to stay late. But utilizing some of the, of the new features with some design services, um, can really expand your lab of, you know, what needs to be focused on and what can be outsourced. And that in itself will be, you'll be more efficient. So one thing to take a look at is a design service called Full Contour, uh, which three shape bones, and I'm not doing a big sales pitch on Full Contour, but there is a huge efficiency when using, you know, any design service. It's just that Full Contour is, um, integrated with three shape in some aspects. Um, and it, it, if you're utilizing some of this uh, design service, it is making your lab more efficient. And that was part of today's presentation. So full contour and three shape, we have two options when it comes to design services. We have full contour, which are dental technicians designing all sorts of cases. And you can see that on the left-hand side. But last year, um, 3Shape released 3Shape Automate, which is a full AI powered design platform for crowns, single crowns and night guards. So basically you scan your case in, 
for a crown or a night guard. You upload it to 3Shape Automate. And as soon as a, five minutes is the quickest uh, turnaround, you can download the case and have an STL file of the crown. So maybe it's you know on a late Friday afternoon and you got to go to your kid's ball game and you have a whole bunch of single crowns and night guards to do. You technically can upload all of those to 3Shape Automate and have our AI cloud uh, design crowns or night guards. So again, another way of being more efficient. And I just want to walk you through some of the ins and outs of 3Shape Automate. And it, it kind of all factors in right into this presentation. So, uh, you know, obviously one, it's consistent because it's, it's AI designing. Um, it's fast and you can have your cases designed as quick as five minutes and it's scalable. So you can, you can scan in hundreds of orders in your, in your day, if, if that's how many cases you have, and you can upload them all at once to 3Shape Automate. And once they're done, you can download all of them all at once as well. So again, very flexible and scalable. So how can Automate help you in the lab? Um, first, you provide the inputs, you provide the material files, you go into your 3Shape Automate account and, and pick, do you like uh, broad contacts? You know, what occlusion do you like cut out, right? And then the AI designs it for you. And then you, the user, reviews it and accepts or rejects it. So you can upload 100 cases. The, the AI designs your 100 cases. And if uh, you only like one of those cases, you only download one of those cases, you only get charged for one of those cases. So it's free to try and you only pay for what you approve and download. So let's take a look at some of the unique workflows um, within 3Shape Automate. So here's a little video of, of uploading five cases at once. So you would scan in your five cases, you would upload your five single uh, crowns, it uploads, you tell it the time that you want turnaround. For this instance, it's a five minute turnaround. And then you would, could go right into the automate web page. You would review, this is a little review portal here. You see all the different screenshots. And if you would like them, you could either download individually or you can bulk download uh, right back into your demo manager. Um, and then you can go right to milling, or you can actually edit those designs um, as well. All right, so let's take a look at the integration with Dental Systems and Automate. So if you're using a Dental Systems 2016 to 2020, you can upload one case at a time, and you can preview your case in your Automate um, uh, account and you can get your STL file. Now, if you upgrade to the dental systems 2021, there's some more efficiencies. You can upload as many cases as you want uh, and you can download all those cases uh, once you approve them. And there's an editing function. So if one of those cases you need to tweak a cut tip, you can open that case up and redesign it in the dental system. So a lot of flexibility with that. Um, I know we're getting close out of time, but just want to go through a couple of little things. So 3Shape Automate, um, you can send stone model cases, it scans, impression scans, intraoral scans. Um, some of the things required with a stone model scan are die trims. Just make sure that it's an ideal die trim for better margin results. Um, with intraoral scans, any STL, We'll, we'll do with Automate. Um, if you're using a third-party software, you can scan with that third-party lab scanner and send to Automate as well. There's just no editing features um, utilizing that workflow. Any STL file you can upload as well. So intro, the third-party intraoral scanners work. So it's an, it's an open scan source for getting crowns designed. Um, so next, just a couple of little highlights. We now can do multiple units in a single arch, so mo multiple posteriors. That was an update that, that came last fall. Um, 
Here's an example. Labs are becoming very creative. Um, so for instance, if you have a full large case, they're uploading the posteriors to automate, getting their posterior crowns designed, and then their anterior cases, they will then edit and design them themselves. So again, being a little bit more efficient on that aspect. We also provide a single STL solo die as well for each individual unit. So a nice little check die STL file comes with the case. Um, Automate also works with when you design a case uh, that might be a split file, might be an abutment that you want a crown design. So you can design the abutment um, and then save and close and then upload that abutment file to Automate. Automate will think the abutment is a prepped tooth and then will design you a crown to fit over uh, that abutment. So it works as an implant workflow as well. Same with models. So um, you get an intraoral scan in, you can go ahead and make the model. And then once the model's done, you can put the model in the 3D printer, and then you can send the crown design to Automate, and then Automate will design the crown for you as well. So again, a little bit more efficient uh, when it comes with intraoral scans and how you parse out the, the different design uh, workflows. And uh, just a little update from some what labs are saying. So again, very reliable, um, gives me a technician, right? At your disposal, at your fingertips, time, right? You're not sitting in front of this, the, the design PC designing single crowns or night guards. You have time to grow your business. So again, being more efficient in that aspect. Um, and then here are some of the pricing, just in case you're interested with Automate. Um, there is a premium, the quicker you want your design STL to come back, but most labs will scan their cases in one day and then that afternoon upload them to Automate. And then the next day come in and check, you know, which ones they approve and then download them. So the, the 10 hour turnaround is, is uh, probably what's probably widely used like 95% of the time. Um, and then we do have a night guard workflow as well with Automate. Um, again, different design times when getting your night guard STL file as well. Um, but again, the 10 hour turnaround is, is what's, uh, what's being consistently used, you know, upload your file in the afternoon, download it the next morning. So um, just to wrap up, we got one more. Oh yeah, just a, a couple more numbers. Great acceptance rate. Labs are loving Automate. Uh, we're seeing 91% of cases that have been uploaded are being approved and downloaded. Uh, we did almost half a million designs in, in just under a year. And there are over 300 uh, active labs in the US utilizing uh, Automate currently. All right, and then before we wrap up, because I know I'm a little uh, past, but you know, there's there's a, one other se section, uh, additional help, you know, efficiency, thinking outside the box. Where can you learn continuous improvements over three shape? So one, three shape, we have, and I'm, I got a video here. I'm not going to play the whole video, but you know. I'll, I'll, hey, what's up, guys? Min I'll uh, hey, what's just up? pause it here. So. We've done interviews with some leading uh, lab techs. And, and here we have Mid Tran, who is a, a very well uh, globally digitally famous lab tech up in Canada. We did an interview with him last year on this generation red scanners on the new Lenovo PCs. Uh, and what Min, who is an, an expert in digital, has to say about 3Shape. Um, you can find this on our YouTube channel. So it's, it's a great wealth of knowledge to go visit our, our Academy YouTube channel. Um, next, peer-to-peer -peer wealth of knowledge on uh, Q&A between, you know, labs, you know, throughout globe. Um, and one is the Three Shape Facebook study group. Um, and I know maybe some of you out there aren't on Facebook and you're like, I'm not gonna get Facebook. This is a wealth of knowledge. If you just make a Facebook account and don't tell your friends and family and only utilize it 
for this three shape uh, group here, you're gonna learn a ton. And I even, I've been with three shape for, for over 11 years and I look at this feed and I learn things almost on a daily basis. So whether it's tips or tricks or someone asking about PC specs, this is peer to peer is, is a great way for you to learn and educate yourself uh, continuously within this three shape environment. So I highly recommend being a member of this three shape study group. There's over 32,000 members globally. So these are your peers, reach out. And I couldn't say there's not more of, this is such a friendly group of knowledge sharing. So don't be shy, um, you know, get in there, introduce yourself. It's, it's a great group of, of uh, three shapers. Next, something that three shapes started this year is uh, chat with an expert. Um, so if you're stuck on a specific case, you saw a workaround or a tip or a trick that someone shared at a trade show lecture, perhaps, you can schedule time with one of our academy members. If you go to threeshape.com slash chat, you can schedule a 15, 30 minute um, uh, window with one of our academy members where we'll send you a Zoom link, just like we're using here on today's webinar. And, uh, and then you have, you're one-on-one -on -one with one of our experts. Uh, again, it's free not necessarily meant for supporting support calls or anything like that. It's more for designing or, you know, working through a specific case, but again, it's free and uh, it's one-on-one. -on -one, so I highly recommend reaching out to uh, this threeshape.com slash chat and scheduling a time with one of our Academy team. Next, uh, just to reiterate um, our YouTube channel, this specific page is the Three Shape Automate, uh, where I showed some of the videos prior, but you can dive in and, and see them, um, you know, individually a little bit closer. Uh, but Three Shape as well, we have a huge uh, YouTube channel with hundreds of videos. They're all around three to five minutes, so it's not a huge uh, time needed to watch them, but um, it's, a, it's a great wealth of knowledge. And then, last but not least, if you are looking for more training, uh, Three Shape offers a uh, training service. You can email them at academyna at threeshape.com uh, to see, you know, what what uh, what types of designs we're training on. Because you know that's another way to become more efficient is just learning from an expert, and then you know you can take all that knowledge back to your lab and and teach your colleagues. And then now all of you, you know, are a little bit more efficient in that you know design set, uh, setup. 